Dude, we got boobs. <laughs> yeah, please use our images and our games in your in your semi-pornographic teen sex comedy. We, we like that because <laughs> boobs. If you want to just visualize what 1983 might have looked like, this is a good movie. They flash their boobs to him. I'm Eugene. I'm the nerd. <laughs> boobs. It, it's imagine if you're a 15 year old boy writing a film script in the 80s. This is the script you would have written. Wait a minute, I haven't seen boobs in a few minutes and it's like, oh, boobs. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I, you know, here's the thing. I, I like the way this film started out because it starts with a shot of somebody playing pole position, the video game, and it's got music about playing video games. And then it cuts to a girl in a Skippy shorts, and then it cuts to other very various video games. So the opening sequence is fantastic. And here's the thing. It sets you up for what this movie is going to be about, right? Uh, gorgeous girls, video games, sophomore humor. Fart jokes, boobs, <laughs> a lot of boobs. Yeah. Well, even the the theme song that it starts with, it's by a band called Legion. Who they say it said they say they're a heavy metal band, but if that's true, then that they lost their heavy metal cred. And and I wrote down some of the lyrics to the song so so people know what they're getting into with this movie. It's called uh, "Playing with My Joystick." Uh, wink it left, jerk it right, shoot fast, <laughs> shoot straight, video to the max. And, oh, please let me have a quarter. I got to have a quarter, quarter. Totally awesome video games. <laughs> That's the theme song that it starts out with, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good job, Legion. That, that movie, uh, that theme song rocks. But yeah, that's what you're getting into. Fart humor and and... And boobs, a lot of boobs. I forgot how like early eighties these teen sex comedies were like. Dude, we got boobs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you like meatballs, or porkies, or Revenge of the Nerds, this movie's right there with those. Yeah, this is like Porkies meets The Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> and and you get boobs like right away too. So the main character Eugene is driving into work for his first day. Two gorgeous women roll up next to him and they are playing like a college prank where they have to take a picture of a nerd with shorts or something like that. And to entice him over to her, their car, they flash their boobs to him. And of course, being the nerd that he is, he climbs right on out and gets in that car and um, you get boobs quite, quite a bit throughout the entire film. If, if, yep. if so, when you're watching it, it'll go up here and you're like, wait a minute, I haven't seen boobs in a few minutes. And it's like, Oh, boobs. Okay. There we go. <laughs> boobs. Yeah. So that nerd is Eugene and he's going to go work at the arcade owned by Jefferson, the handsome ladies, man. And he, so here's you, you, you almost know, because it's just an early 80s teen sex flick so you know what's gonna you know what's gonna happen so your cast of characters are your very stereotypical ones so you have the handsome ladies man leader with his entourage of hot chicks jefferson aka uh captain adventure from star trek 3 <laughs> that's where i recognized him from uhura totally put him in the closet remember that <laughs> but he owns the place and he's the cool guy. Um, but he's got a nemesis who's um, kind of a foil, who's the crazy neurotic uh, bad boy, King Vidiot, a.k.a. punk rock Uncle Rico. So we all know that Uncle Rico really wasn't through playing football in the early 80s. He was actually a punk rocking uh, video game player. Um, he got of the course. nerd, Eugene. You got the ditzy, cute girl, Patsy, with a total, and she totally had the uh, volley girl accent. <laughs> and she's also known as um, uh, Bobcat Goldthwait's um, um, love interest in Police Academy 4. Ooh, she takes off really? That. I didn't Remember recognize that. that. No. I re that's uh -uh. why I recognize her. Wow. I recognize people, man. She was, <laughs> but she was Police Academy 4. She was like, took off the hat and... Yeah, citizens on patrol. 
Then you have the flat, the fat slob who, who's pretty bad at everything except for that one thing, which is the video games in this case. And you have the grouchy old guy um, who's trying to just destroy the good fun because that's how old guys are. The old business leader, the old guy, he just wants to ruin everybody's fun. He comes up with all these plans to try to, to, try to uh, bring down the arcade. And they're always foiled by the kids because they love their arcade so much. Um, and that bad guy, he was played by Joe Don Baker, who I recognize from maybe a hundred things. No kidding. <laughs> like what the hell? Like Joe Don Baker. <laughs> like I know this yeah, was... he's like been in everything. So <laughs> yes, I don't, I, I couldn't even pinpoint one thing for him. <laughs> I mean, he's been, he's in just tons been in of so stuff. like, yeah, but, but you have that whole cast of very kind of, uh, stereotypical early eighties characters and you throw some farts and titties in there and and you have yourself um joysticks uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's basically it <laughs> yeah but did you notice they used the pac-man motif and stuff and yeah. you're wondering how they got away the with did. that yeah go ahead well midway actually let them use pac-man and, and the pac-man motif and all of that and midway also let them use an upcoming game all uh, the wizard style, which was called Satan's Hollow. That's what McDorfus and Vidiot were competing, so they could like, like you know, save, save the... the arcade or whatnot, or or the earlier one anyway. But but Midway was all about like, yeah, please use our images and our games in your in your semi pornographic teen sex comedy. We we like that because we'll get more sales. I don't think that would happen today because I think m maybe back then they wouldn't, they didn't really get it or they were new or <laughs> something, <laughs> but I don't know. They totally let them use all their video games and, and their motifs and everything. So yeah, back then good, they were probably on. like, yeah, anything to promote our products and video games yeah. and it's our target audience. And if we can like, associate mm -hmm. Pac-Man with titties, then absolutely, that's, that's awesome. More the better. And then after the film came out, they're probably like, maybe we should think a bit yeah. more before we agree for, to these sponsorships. Or, or maybe some years later when, because maybe they didn't know how big Pac-Man really was. It's kind of like Star Wars when they made that Star Wars special. I don't think they knew that Star Wars was the huge phenomenon that it was was going to be. So they just made some stupid stuff, and then they're like, "Oh, we should have done that." I think that's the case here too, because now if, if you try to if you try to put Pac Man like the actual Pac Man in in your movies and stuff, they'd probably you one you'd probably be paying a lot, and two they probably wouldn't, wouldn't even let you if you had like farts and titties and stuff like that. <laughs> if this was your film they'd see that script and they'd be like no not a chance <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah it, it's if you want to if you want to just visualize what 1983 might have looked like this is a good movie um yeah, everyone the had the look right the short tight shorts the vidiots with their punk rocker look and the spiked hair. With, oh, the punk, punk rocker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the nerd. And everybody had the look. You know he's and a nerd because he women, has glasses and he talks through his nose. <laughs> I'm Eugene. I'm the nerd. I have glasses. I've never had sex. And I'm going to spend this movie trying <laughs> to have sex with people. Oh, including the bad guy's wife who's drugged out. Yeah. And, and the fat guy's... The slob is like, yeah, she's like totally um, out of it. You could totally get it on. <laughs> a yeah. little a little statutory rate. Never heard anybody in the early 80s. That's suppose. fine. She's <laughs> on drugs. It's okay when they're on drugs. Yeah, this movie wouldn't be made today. Not a chance. It's one Not of those a chance things. It, it's imagine if you're a 15-year-old boy writing a film script in the 80s. This is the script you would have written. <laughs> That's exactly what this. Hey, Hollywood, is. what's up? You got your zit <laughs> in your horn. You're just like, I wrote this for you. Let's make this movie. Come on, video games and tits and farts. All the best stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, 
so that's kind of this movie. I think it was really going for that Porky's, that Animal House thing. Um, Absolutely. This is right up there with those films. I mean, yeah, so it's basically Porky. That, that's what this is. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, wow, this is such an early 80s thing. But then I think, you know, actually this whole teen sex comedy, and I've never heard of this movie, by the way. I suggested it because I thought I saw all the teen sex comedies from the early 80s. I guess I was wrong. We have a friend. We have so many friends on Twitter. Um, and one of our uh, Twitter friends was like, hey, watching this free on you on Tubi tonight, because that's the kind of people we roll with on Twitter, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, what is this movie? And, and it was a, a gal too, and she's watching it. And I'm like, okay. And so I got the idea to watch this, and and um, I'm glad we did because this needs this needed to be watched by us for sure. But I, I started thinking about it like this was a very early '80s thing, and and that was it. But then I started thinking, no, you know, even in the late '90s, you still had movies kind of like this i think that these kind of early 80s movies were the prototypes for american pie you you still in the those kind of like raunchy comedies of the 90s i think that this is kind of the prototype for those what do you think it could be uh, american pie i'm trying to remember they didn't really have the the evil person trying to put them out of business aspect in the stories but they definitely <laughs> had the like sex comedy bit in there. The yeah. guys just trying to get laid and what are they going to do to get laid and being obnoxious and kind of pushing the boundaries of appropriate behavior for films. So certainly I, without these films, you certainly would not have had those films of the nineties. This definitely set the, set the stereotype for it. What's funny about this too, is like how many films from the eighties have this formula like it's it's been done so many times in the 80s and it's like really like at what point were the studios like did we just make this film oh i see they're trying to close down a video game arcade instead of close down the fraternity okay totally different movie yeah yeah yeah. as long as you have your theme and maybe a different set of actors or something you you can you can do that so the theme here is definitely arcade games Mm-hmm. And I think the director even said that, like, he was watching some kids just stand and light their arcade. He's like, well, I'm going to tap into that by making a teen sex comedy that's surround all about video games. And this only took 13 days to film this whole movie. <laughs> can you believe it? I can believe it. So, <laughs> actually, yeah. no, I mean, I have to be honest. I mean, yes, most everything takes place in the arcade with the exception of going to the person's house. But that's still pretty impressive to film a mm-hmm. feature film especially with this many people in it because they had a lot of extras and a lot of background people and everything that goes on it. I think that's pretty impressive to film this film yeah. within two weeks. Absolutely. And that, that house that you're talking about, that was Nat King Cole's house. <laughs> exactly. Formerly, he used to, he, that used to be his house. Did you know that? You I did. Knew I that saw that. Because yeah. we're geeks. So we <laughs> <laughs> said he was like the only black up. dude in the neighborhood. <laughs> but Yeah. <laughs> why that's important it's not but that just goes to show you that we're we're geeks and and we look into this kind of thing <laughs> we don't just watch the movies we gotta know more no, about gotta the know movies about it. what's the history behind this movie what weird random facts <laughs> yeah. are in this film yeah but it only t- took 13 days then i guess like for instance they they got a warehouse they rented a bunch of the machines and they even put a facade on the warehouse. So the whole thing, almost the whole thing was filmed at that warehouse. And then there was another scene with the court where they're trying to defend the mayor, like whether it should be open or not. And one of them is telling the bad guys telling the story about how it's this orgy palace full of like dominatrixes and you get more titties and stuff. And the other is like everybody, the good guys are like everybody's in white and they're all religious and they're they're. They want to go to college Studying for school, but that whole court scene was <laughs> yeah. so that whole scene was full. They rented a VFW for a day or something. I thought it was pretty impressive. The fact that it was kind of lower budget than I thought and that it was filmed in 13 days. Yeah. Having been good. on film I mean, sets, it, it's surprising how long short scenes take to make. 
And mm-hmm. so the fact that, I mean, I've been on sets where you spend an entire day making a scene that's like two minutes long kind of a thing. So the fact that they've made this in two weeks, they must've been long days, but still very good coordination on the director and, and AD's part to get everything coordinated and people doing everything. And this was in the era of film. So they would have been changing film canisters every so often as well. And yeah. different and stuff. So, yeah. So I, I got to give that to them. Yeah. But I was thinking like, if we had some money, um, like a production <laughs> budget, we could just make kind of these, like these shtick eighties movies because they're kind of, they'd be kind of easy to write. We, we yeah. just have that cast of, of uh, stereotypical characters and the whole press is the, the good kids, the kid kids are the good people got to save their beloved place against the man mm-hmm. who's trying, who maybe has some goons and tries to try to take away from him. And that's a low budget movie, but big budget movies did that too. The, that's basically the plot of the Goonies. Yeah. Trying to take away their house. Yeah, and they got to go on some big adventure to find pirate treasure to save their house from the corporate man, right? Normally, the corporate in real life, the corporate man just takes your shit. <laughs> what? Wait, do I still um, have you? Where, where do the kids hang out nowadays? Like, what would be the place that the kids need to save? Well, it's funny because we did that episode on Saved by the Bell, and our all hanging at the hop and dancing and eating ice cream. Just wrote that show. People didn't actually hang out at the hop. They hung out at arcades or at malls. Yeah, Nowadays, I don't do know. Like now. my son, I I, I kind of like track him. He just went yesterday. He just went to a, a kind of those rooms you try to get out of. Oh, the escape rooms. Um, and he it's summer, so he'll go to the lake. But oftentimes he doesn't hang out. He's on the computer talking to people. I think they hang out online a lot. So That's where the big corporate man's trying to take over his virtual world that he lives in. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like uh, Ready Player One. Yeah, that's basically. It. That's kind of how it is. Is the corporate man wants to come take his virtual world in, away from him, and he's got to try to save it. It's Ready Player One, man. It's happened. It's happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's our script. Hmm. That's joystick. So. What do you think, man? Yeah, I. it was hard because when I f- first watched it, I was kind of like, eh. But then I realized it, when it was made and how old I am. And now when I see boobs bouncing around on screen, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, oh, those girls, I feel bad for them for having to do this just to make some money in a film. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. And then like the super long fart jokes, you're like, come on, really? Fart humor? Uh, and that kind of stuff. <laughs> So it's me watching it at a different age with a different view of the world. If I were 15 in the 80s, I would have loved this film. I think this is this is the exact film that I would have enjoyed. So <laughs> for that reason, I'm going thumbs up on it. Yeah. Because it is what it is, and I support it for being that. I it's funny, and I don't know whether it's not funny because I'm a middle-aged guy in the 20 two decades into the 21st century. Or if it's because it's just not funny and it never was. I can't really make that determination. I'd have to have my maybe my son watch this and see if he likes it, but I'm not going to watch it. I don't think he it. would so, like this. He, I, would, he definitely would be down on this film. I mean, if he discourages Top Gun based on the machoism and the main character that... Yeah, <laughs> that the exploitation away with of, everything. of women. And they're probably real actresses who, who didn't get paid their share stuff like that right so i don't think he'd like it either one thing i did like about it is i like the whole aesthetic i like the whole video game arcade and the, and the style and the whole early 80s vibe to it I, I i love i love that um but i have to go kind of thumbs down on it because i just don't think it's funny it's not yeah. funny but i enjoyed i did enjoy researching this film though so for that <laughs> reason i i, I guess I could give it a thumbs up just because it was fun to research this film um, and the, the, the stupid theme song and, and all of that. I, I don't know. I, I might, I might even for that reason, change it to a soft thumbs up, a soft, I'm, thumbs, I might up. Go soft thumbs up actually. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Very I soft. Think, yeah. I, I, I don't think this movie's funny. But... I, I agree with you. I don't really think it's all that funny either, but I think it's because it's my point of view. And my age and the world I live in now is why I don't think it's funny. But I do think I would have thought it was funny 
in the 80s. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, ch- I'll change mine a little bit, mostly because yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go a little bit, mainly because I'm, I'm like the Joe Don Baker now, instead of the, it's <laughs> instead of the, the cool dude who owns the video thing. Like I used to be, I'm more like the, the, the Joseph Rudder who's trying to shut fun down. That's me now. I'm Joseph Rudder. You kids. You and kids. I sound like him too. Like my son, he's been on his phone too long. I'm like, are you smoking your eye crack again? I'm going to take that phone. I'm going to mess it up with a hammer. I swear to God, I'm, I'm that old guy now who wants to shut down the fun of the teenagers. <laughs> so I, I suppose I had to get over that and just give this thing a soft thumbs up. That's what I'll do. <laughs> you view Joan Don Baker as the hero of the film. He's actually the protagonist. Yeah, he's the hero. He's yeah. trying to shut down all this shenanigans and get them studying. And I'm like, yeah, boy, that's what I'm talking about. You go, John. Joe Don Baker. I'm with you, bro. <laughs> you don't let those They're damn wasting kids their time play video games all day. Place. Wasting their money. I'm that guy. Yeah. I'm the bad guy now. So I should give it a thumbs up just because I know I'm the bad guy now. <laughs> <laughs>